What's up guys and welcome back, we're here with another Rise of Mordor battle and really I should be being quiet because we're in an ambush and I've probably given away the our position with this uh, intro but you know what, I'll just carry on talking like normal these men of Gondor can just deal with the consequences so anyway we have Gondor as an army uh, in ambush along with a faction we've not actually seen in the channel yet which is Rovanian Rovanian? I'm, I'm probably butchering that. Rovanian? I think it's Rovanian. Anyway, these guys look excellent. They're like, um, Rovanian is like, uh, is like part of, uh, the East. It's, they're Eastern men, but they are, they get on the goodies, as far as I'm aware from my knowledge. But these guys look amazing. Look at them. Look at that armor. That is insane. They almost looks like they are um, sea peoples with like shells and stuff on their shield. They look really cool. But um, yes, yeah, as far as I'm aware, these guys are also good guys. So um, they're teaming up with Gondor to deal with, I think it's Isengard and uh, the Dunlingdings. That's Dunlading tribes who are looking the wrong way at the moment, I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, they're looking the wrong way. Guys, the guys, the battle's the other way. Turn around, please. Anyway. So we'll let it play because I think there is some setting up to do. But we'll have a quick look at the uh, armies as they as they set up. Um, so we have a black, we have for Gondor Black Root Black Root Vale Archers got there eventually, um, and Falas Coast Levies. Um, we have Penneth Gillian Spearmen. These guys look really really cool. I'm not don't think I've seen them before, but they look excellent. So we've got some lower tier units, more Penneth Gillian Spears. Um, Quite a lot of them, actually. And then we've got some... What are these on the end? Citadel Guards. Uh, make Strengthening up the line. We saw them in the last uh, battle. If you haven't seen that, please go and check that out. You get to see all the really cool, shiny Gondor army uh, units. We've got uh, the Knights of the Silver Swan here. They'll be... Uh, I'm sure they'll be key in getting some good hammer and anvil charges. We've got the Gondor Cavalry. So some weaker cavalry, but still very good. Lots of Knight of the Silver Swan, and they're quite well uh, chevroned up by the looks of it. Um, and in the back here, what else have we got? We've got Gondor Spear Militia. Quite a lot of them by the looks of it down there. Look at all those guys down there. Already in prepared. We've also got um, Fountain Guards. We've got look, quite a lot of Fountain Guards. Um, and then we've got Prince Prince's Coast Guards, which you saw. I don't really rate them, but... Fair enough from bringing them. And then we've also got Gondor Spear Militia. Excellent. Then we've got Gondor Sword Infantry, which we saw. And what have we got here? Anthala Rangers. So R Rovanian sent some troops around here. So have a look at these guys. They look remind me of the Thelian Rangers a bit. Um, obviously because they're Rangers. But yeah, they look really, really cool as well. Um, then what have we got over here? We have for Rovania, we've got... Quite a lot of, um, I'm going to have to have these up because I cannot remember these. There's the Spear Paladins. These guys look really cool. They're like, um, oh, look at those spearheads. They look excellent. Very heavy spear infantry. We've also got uh, Vine Farm Militia. So these guys are going to be the port. Um, look at these guys. Just like They are just farmers with those hats. They're going to be the uh, cannon fodder we all know. Everyone can tell that that's going to happen. There's a lot of them. Oh, okay, these must be uh, Vine Farm a uh, bowman, yes. They have bows. Then we have mounted Vitna court guards. What a name! Uh, more of those uh, court guards, and then we've got uh, mounted rangers here. They're all riding off. Um, and then we've got uh, court swordsmen here. I'll quickly go through these because I know the battle is starting to get underway. A uh, court swordsman. Um, we've also got Vinland guards, um, and we've got vine farmer militia again. So there we go. I think we've covered most of the units. We'll quickly go and look at what Isengard and the Dunlingdings have. We haven't seen the Dunlingdings, I don't think, actually. Dunlingding. Oh, I can't actually. You know what? I can't say that properly, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, uh, we've got Warlord Pillagers. Um, we've got Champion Reavers. These guys are basically... Look at that helmet. That's just an Urukai helmet, and they've just given it to um, the tribesmen. What else have we got here? We've got a uh, Mordor Rabble coming through. We kind of kind of just merge these two art factions together. We've got Dunland Tribesmen. Half orc axes. We've got um, lots of Urukai infantry, obviously. Urukai crossbows. Lots of pikes. Um, 
crossbows, all sorts, Dunherd, swordsmen. They look good. They remind me of Berserkers from uh, Rome 2, to be honest. They, but they look excellent. Blood Avengers, lots of stuff here um, going on. Look at this. Look at this column of just troops through this, through here. That is just insane. There's a lot of guys that are going to have to be killed. And a lot of them look like they're Dunherd uh, warriors of some sort. Dunherd swordsmen, that's the name. But yeah, so this is an ambush in the Fords of Aizen. So, uh, Gondor, for some reason, has finally come to Rohan's aid, but Rohan's not here. And Rovania, uh, I'm going to call him Rovania because that's easier than Rovanian, um, are also here. But the Dunling Ding, the Dunland tribesmen, and Isengard are here to stop them. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe, I think it's uh, the tribesmen and the Urukai are going to be into a trap and they're going to be surprised by some. Uh, Nasty little men on the other side of the river. You can see them. I'm sure they, the, these tribesmen can see all that. That is a huge army. You could not miss that. Yeah, well, none of the, yeah, none of them look like they have the hidden icon on, really. I'm not really sure about those ones in the back. They might be able to not be able to see them yet, but... This is a going to be a pretty epic battle. So, anyway, I'm going to do a quick cut because I've been told by the person that created... I did this battle. This is not a battle that I participated in myself. I should just add um, that there is a little bit of a setting up period. So I will cut until we have a battle. So I will meet you back on the battlefield. Well, I think we're almost ready on the battle. The setting up is almost done. So it actually appears to be Gondor and Dorwinian being ambushed instead. I thought it was the other way around, but no, it seems like it's going to be the evil factions ambushing it. And it sounds like fighting's going on over here. Is someone... Oh, they're just shouting at people. Just stop shouting. I'm trying to do, like, another intro here. So anyway, yes, look at this huge long column that's being formed up of Darwinian and Gondor troops. And there is also a small Darwinian force over here, which I presume is a relief force, which has got most of the cavalry for Darwinian, and it's got some militia, which is, I would have rather put them probably in the, uh, in the, in the ambush lot, because you'd rather have your elites, I would have thought, to, to, uh, come save the day, but look at this, they are surrounded, I'm keeping the hood on, so you can just see all the markers, because they are surrounded by Dunleading and Isengard forces, and I think we are almost ready for the battle to begin, um, I can't really see much more left to do, um, I'm going to fast forward anyway, just in case. But I mean, earlier there was like a little skirmish over here. No one died, but um, there was like three archers fighting, um, or three militia fighting two Dunleading archers. And it's just really funny. It's just like, I was literally could hear the shouting going on. I was like, why is there shouting going on? This just should be silence um, and just like sounds of troops marching. And then there was just these these militia trying to take them on, but obviously they're too, uh, too armored, so they couldn't do any damage. Also, I saw these, um, yeah, these infantry. Look at these guys um, while we're still waiting on the battle to just begin. Um, these watchmen, for Vin uh, Vinland watchmen. Look at those spears. They are amazing. Uh, I can't say enough that the modders have done an amazing job with these uh, units. They just look amazing. They all look unique in, a, in like a different way. And to be honest, I'll try and find them again. I, I, they'll probably be at the front because they'll be cannon fodder. But I'm actually kind of a big fan of these Penneth Gillen uh, spearmen. I don't know why, but I mean, the shield is, just looks really nice. And the green as well, the green and the white goes very nicely. So, uh, I mean, good job on them. And who are these guys? Penneth Gillen. Are these also Penneth Gillen guys? Who are these axemen? These are Hillmen of Lam Landon. All right, so I think we're almost ready. I don't want to have to cut it again, but I might have to. So let's just quickly fast forward. Let's get the hood. I would have thought there can't be much more left to do. Certainly looking at Gondor and Dorwinian. They look like they're ready, as does uh, Isengard. So it looks like they've got a, hu a nice hilltop position up here for their crossbows on their archers um, to fire down from. They've also got tribesmen and scouts here defending the rear, so they can't be flanked. I guess you can't come up the front of this hill. No surprise, it's pretty steep. But then there's line after line of just guys down here getting ready. So, I mean, I would have thought... Are you going to charge in? Charge in, you know you want to, for the man flesh. Man flesh. But yes, yeah, so, I, mean, I would have thought they'd be ready by now. Come on. 
what's left to move. I'll, I mean, it gives me a good chance, I guess, to have a look at some of these units that I haven't had necessarily to look at. These are swordsmen, but they look like they're holding crowbars. But they look really cool, I will admit. They do look like crowbars, though. Um, and there were some really cool axemen over here. Look, there's just so many units um, on the battlefield, which is amazing. Okay, I think they've gone. They've actually gone hidden. I can't see them. I can't see them in the moment with those trees. But there's some really cool double-handed axemen somewhere. Uh, okay, here we go. This looks like this might be about to happen. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, here we go. Oh, gosh. And here we go. Into the breach come the Gondor infantry. So it's not... So they've seen the ambush, clearly, and they've decided to already put positions. And look at that. Spearmen ready. Axes. Half-orc axes into the breach first against these Penithgill and Spearmen. Um, I think the axes will probably... I mean, it says, like, the Penithgill and Spearmen are going to lose this, but I would have the axemen in prolonged melee will probably lose that, but then they are outnumbering the Penithgill and Spears in the units, so I guess numbers-wise they are. On these, uh, Gondor Spear Militia are also not faring very well against the Axes. There's a lot of units on at the moment, so I can imagine this is going to be a tad laggy, I'm sorry guys, but uh, we will we will power through. But yeah, We've also got Gondor Spear Militia at the front here, and these are all, uh, Mordor Rabble, I believe. So these guys are... Uh, also just kind of throwaway units and here we go in comes some some of the crowbar boys they've also got uh, urukai shields that's really cool that it's good to you would imagine the tribesmen were armored up with some urukai like uh weaponry just to like give them a little slight advantage over here because they have pretty terrible weapons i can remember from the film so they just had like stones axes and stuff like that because they were just like in the mountains but yeah these guys now with their crowbar swords I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep that because it sounds funny. Just crowbar swords. And they're going in against more Penithgill and uh, Spearman. I would have thought these guys have a decent chance. Yeah, the melee is even here. We have fountain guards like almost on the front line. And these, yeah, I would focus, archers, I'd focus down these guys. They have no spears and they're a really um, deadly unit. So you want to get these guys off the battlefield as quickly as possible. And why is the Dunherd uh, swordsmen are pulling out of that? They're taking a few casualties, but there's a smart move there. Um, we've got Gondor Sword Infantry here defending. Cavalry already going into the breach. The general of Gondor is having to commit himself to hold this uh, breach because there are no uh, spears here or just any infantry. So we now have uh, the Prince's Coast Guards now coming in to try and save the day. But we really need... Oh, no, there are some Penithgillian spearmen. So why is he sending his general in? Such a risk. Oh, no, he isn't. This is... Oh, no, he is. Yes, this is. I keep thinking that Gondor's the blue because of these goddamn blue horses here. But no, yeah, he's sending his general in. It's very strange. It's also probably a bad idea. Look at this. Dorwinian has basically condemned Gondor to his uh, to their di to their fate, and they're making like a box around um, to defend their position. So Gondor has been betrayed almost by its ally. That is, god damn it, men. They're just like men. They're just so evil, even though they're good. They just think about themselves. So here we go. Got look at that. Look at these um Urukai here. I mean oh no, maybe they maybe we've all got like their uh, swords are all like that, they're all a bit like crowbars. This is the white hand stormers and uh and they are ready. They're in a the shield formation, that's really cool. That is excellent. And we have uh, crossbows here and orc rabble. So or Mordor Bow Rabble. Um and they're just focusing down, which is a smart move. They can just focus down all these archers now in the middle. And they can fire on them from like multiple positions. And we've got... We'll have a quick look at this. Oh, look at this. These watchmen are definitely holding off these... Uh, these swordsmen. That's what I was try trying to think of a uh, word. And the Vinland Guard are having to be committed already though as well. Like these corners here are very vulnerable. If they can get a break these, this uh, corner here, they can just get like a unit, put it in column formation, march through and they flank everything. But um, yeah, Gondor does not look like it's in a good position. To be honest, um, but it has kind of made a lot. It's made a larger box, but um, oh, and as I, oh, well, Fountain Guard were having to be committed to break those half orcs. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, but a larger box is meaning that um, there are gaps for Dunlinding to get through. Like these Wall of Purgers to just go through that gap here, and then they go through and they take out these Black Root Bale archers. They'll run them down, and then they could get. Yeah, just as I say it, it's happening. Here we go, Wall of Purgers going in. Hopefully they make it through, they don't get held up and 
combat. Oh, some of them have. Some of them are going to make it through. And here we go. Uh, Swan Knights are having to be committed to uh, try and deal with them, it looks like. And look at that. Here they go. In amongst the archers. Cut them down, boys. There is no longer need of a king. And Gondor is no, is weak. God, that was awful. I just, just commentary. Just don't even bother, Pope. Just a waste of time. No, oh, look at that bloody up knight. Go on, Swan Knight. You can take them all down. You're the cream of the crop of cavalry. As we found out in uh, the last battle. You just kill everything. And hopefully they can save these cavalry. I mean, you imagine in Plong Melee, now those cavalry are probably... Um, want to get out of there. Let's see. Well, I don't know. They're they're fairly weak. They probably could beat these knights of uh, the, the swan knights and then they could probably deal with them. Oh, no. These hillmen have been sent in. Wow. They've had to commit a lot. How much has uh, the ambushers got left? They don't look like they've got a lot left. They look like they've committed everything. But here comes uh, Vinland. Not Vinland. Dorwinian with his uh, with his mounted Vinter Coast Guards. So they are finally arriving. So, and I imagine the militia are not too far too far behind. Oh, they're going straight for this point up here. So, no wonder they had troops up here. These, um, it's bad troops against bad troops. So, we've got, like, I've forgotten what these are. These are probably just tribesmen. Yeah, basic tribesmen. And we've also got Urukai scouts. And they're going in. Oh, look at that. Terrible troops against terrible troops. Let's see who wins. Probably the terrible troops. You need to send some guys over here. Deal with these guys. Oh, these guys look a bit more elite. They also still... Yeah, look at this. He's just flanking you. You need to just commit all your troops and get them all in combat. You Thorn Militia. Ooh. Yeah, these guys here. Send them in. Send these guys in. They're going to flank you and then they're going to break all these guys because they're so... Look, they're already breaking. Farm Militia are just awful. The de yeah, to be fair, the tribesmen definitely probably better than these uh, Urukai Scouts. Oh, gosh. That, that whole attack did not go well. Oh, but he's got some farm militia here. No, they're going around the side. I should have committed everything there. But it's not looking good in the center here for... Um, oh, the lag just gets so much higher when you go in here. It's not looking good for Gondor now. Gondor has been broken through. This is a huge break here. And these fountain guard... Are, oh, no, these aren't fountain guard. These are Urukai Pikes. I keep looking and thinking, like, the gold and the blue is the goodies, but it's not. They are broken through. Gondor is in not a good spot now. He needs to fall back to a... Uh, Dorwinian's positions that they'll, if he'll allow him in. But look at this, yeah, here we go. Fountain Guard, falling back. It looks like it's a, a doomed defense. But who knows, it may not be. They may be able to pull this off. There's still some guys out here, these Coast Guards will hold for a while until they're flanked and then they'll um, have problems. But they, they do look goddamn awesome. I will admit, they, I didn't seem to perform very well for me, but they, they do look good. These um, Dunherd swordsmen seem to be very, very dangerous and very, very powerful. Um, they seem to be certainly better than Gondor infantry, I would have said. Like the Gondor basic infantry, anyway. Oh, they're breaking just like that. Just as I say they're doing well and holding the Coast Guard break. Just as I say. I mean, they are getting fired on from the side now, and with no... We're just being a polearm unit, they are probably going to break quite quickly. There we go. Gondor sword infantry breaking. Spear militia breaking out here. Gondor's basically gone. There is just um, a few Fountain Guard left, plus some, uh, and then the rest, and, and the Silver Swans are still alive. But I have a feeling that the general might be dead, but I'm not sure. Let's see. He's, no, no, I can still see him with his red cape. He's still alive. Need to keep him alive, otherwise the rest of Gondor units are going to break. And what's happening here? Oh no, I thought these were Dorwinian. Also now look like they're um, Urukai a bit, just from a distance, but. Dorwini now is ready to hold off. But the cavalry is coming in in the rear, I've just realized. And um, so we now have uh, progress in the rear. Because now if they can defeat these units back here, then they can turn everything and face it that way. And they may have a chance. It becomes a normal pitch battle. But I think the numbers is just too much in their favor. Look at the balance of power. Oh, yeah. There is no way they are doing this. Enemy count at 1,300, 5,600 uh, bad guys left. There is no way they are doing this. I hate to say it. But they were outnumbered from the start as well. And they were being ambushed. It's pretty unfair, I think. But it's been a good ambush battle. And we've been able to see two factions we've not seen before. The Dunlingdings and the uh, Dorwinians. And, but, I mean, there's still chance. There's still hope. If they break a general, they might be able to break some of these guys. But look at all these guys. They'll, 
There's so many. It is still very laggy because of all these guys still on the battlefield. But it is huge. Just insane. There are so many guys left. And they're just making one last stand. One defiant last stand. It is, yeah, look at all these swordsmen, uh, these Dunherd swordsmen that are getting sent in first. They're just surrounding um, them and at this hill. Oh, gosh. I've, where's their relief force? Is the relief force dead? It's almost dead, yeah. They just keep, keep they need to um, get these guys out of melee and send them back in. Um, because, like, now they've got white hand stormers in here. They're just going to cut these guys down. You need to get them out, draw away the, uh, the stormers. And then go for weak units like the Urukai. Why am I yawning? It's the middle of the day, Pope. You shouldn't be yawning. You've been up ages. God. So here we go. One final last defense. Defiant stand. Rohan's not getting its its men. No wonder Gondor never makes it to help them at Helm's Deep. Because they're here getting massacred. Look at that. Oh, gosh. Poor Fountain Guard. No wonder. Are they running? They might be. Or going into combat, which is probably a better idea because then they probably won't shoot at you. Oh, here we go. Yeah, into combat. Fill the lines, boys. This thin line here has got a hole. But it's probably one of the thicker lines. Oh, and these Citadel guards all just getting peppered down. Just put everything into the front line. You just got to put anything in the middle. It's just going to break. And there we go. Those fountain guard broke. I think the Gondor general is dead now because, like, Gondor's morale is just shattered. If those two units, those two elite units are broken, yeah, Citadel guards and Fountain guards are breaking. That means they, the Gondor general must be dead. Um, but yeah, they've used their archers so well, have um, Urukai, the Urukai and the tribesmen. They've basically just focused down any mage unit. And, uh, and they're basically just, like, overwhelmed. Uh, with worse units, so like these half orcs, not very good, but there's a lot of them, so they're overwhelming elite units. So it's basically quality over quantity. I mean, in fairness, Gondor did not bring quality units either. He brought a lot of Penithgen and spearmen, which I am aware are low tier units, along with spear militia. There's a lot of them, but um, I would have thought they'd still be better than half orcs. I've not really studied the stats enough, but I would imagine they are probably better, just because orcs are just mindless fools. Oh, here we go. He's dismounting his general. His general's going into combat. Or oh, hope he's going into combat. Please don't stand there and get focused down. That's like the last thing that you want. I still... Just look at them. Those guys are just excellent. They're going into combat. You're going to be needed. Here we go. The final stand. The storm... White hand storm is going in. These guys are just like... Those guys are like the... Well, they are basically stormtroopers of Isengard. They've just got huge shields. Big swords cut everyone down. Oh, there's a little fight going on here. How did you get through? Get a kill, though. Go on, Barry. Get a kill. Oh, that's na nasty to see. Look at him. He's a Christian. He's like, oh, form the cross and some down and die. But this Dunnerling in the back here, he's going to get some kills. Or not. Or get killed. That's also quite a large possibility. So then the general, he's just going to get focused down there. Oh, well, he should be being focused on. Maybe they've run out of ammo. But, I mean, it's looking like... I don't know. Prolonged melee. They seem to hold well. But... And now they're in basically defending themselves against a the hill where they can't be flanked. I mean, I would try and get stuff around here. It looks like you could probably get units around here. This doesn't look too steep. Um, but maybe they, maybe the players said, no, you can't flank. you just got to assault this final position head on. Who knows? I w it'd be interesting to know how much money they had as well for uh, for, f for the armies because otherwise, because I imagine with more money, um, Gondor could have put out a better army and uh, and maybe stood a better chance, maybe. Because I feel like uh, Isengard and the Dunleavings brought a lot of elite units. And, well, Urukai, the Urukai have just got elite units throughout, to be honest. The pike when they're swordsmen, the crossbow is all very good. I mean, like those swords, those uh, tribes and swordsmen must be good because they look, they look it, and they look like they're getting their money's worth out of them. So they must be fairly expensive, I would have thought. Or well, maybe they're not. And he's just got a lot of them, 
and that's just been the key thing. But yeah, look, there's now not there's like almost a one man gap now in the, in the line. That's all that's left. And then oh here they're almost broken through the corners. Like I said earlier, corners are the vulnerable point. The general needs to be set. Oh, he's going back on his horse now. Interesting. Let's have a look at him. Oh god, he's so bloodied up. He is so bloodied up. He looks very Roman as well, but it's okay. Oh, they're breaking off. Interesting. Are they going to basically finish them out with arrows? I wonder. I wonder. Are they going to finish them with arrows? It's interesting that the doorway and spear paladins have uh, fallen back, making a nice big gap. And the general's dismounted again. And then remounted. Interesting. I keep yawning and I'm not... <sighs> Very strange. It must be so... I must just feel tired inside. But I'm... N but I've been up so long. I'm just... This is the... This is the effort I go for you guys. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what effort there really is, but... I, ba I battle through tiredness. But, uh... The pallet... Okay... I'm interested to see. I'd interested to know what hap, what the decision was and agreement was here, because this is interesting. Okay, so he's going to a smaller box. Okay, which makes sense. But I'm surprised that the uh, enemies really, the evil factions really allowed him to do this. But uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, I imagine they're gonna just shoot them to pieces. Look at all these archers getting ready. This is. This is just going to be an... Yeah, execution. Oh, my God. That is brutal. What Poor guys. Let's just, like... And, yeah, they, sh they shoot the horses. No one is being spared. How close are they going to get? I don't know, but they're getting very close. Oh, look at these guys taking it to the back. They look very elvish to these um, Dornian. I forgot to say, they look... That's, that's what I thought. These guys look very elvish, but look at that. In they go. One last final charge. They're not being allowed to um, just stand there and shoot them. Oh, but look at that. They've just been swarmed. That is... I mean, they might kill quite a few of these archers, but I mean, as soon as the main swordsmen come in, they're going to get gunned... Well, not gunned down, but they're going to get cut down, chopped to little pieces, and then eaten because they're Urukai. And I mean, the evil men might eat them as well. I don't know. They might be into that sort of cannibalism thing. I'm not sure. Probably not. But man flesh is on the menu again for these guys. I mean, these poor Vinland uh, spear paladins are going to get just killed off. Who are these? Oh, these are uh, the Dunleading uh, cavalry. What are they called again? I can never remember. Champion Reavers. Oh, it's the general. Yeah, then they're, they're, they're just gonna cut all these guys down. Cavalry is so OP in this mod. It, it is just ridiculous. But that's no surprise because there's some epic cavalry charges in Lord of the Rings. Um, I mean, Helm's Deep comes to mind when, especially now we've got Urux on the battlefield. What we need is the Rohirrim to arrive now to save the day. 6,000 Rohirrim would do the job. Oh my god, the lag just going to look at in here is insane. And there we go. Close victory, apparently. I don't think it was really that close, but um, apparently it was. We'll end the replay anyway and have a look. So, um, we got low, 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 lol what three. Jeez, sorry, guy, man, I butchered your name there. <laughs> um, the, playing as Isengard. Deployed so many. Like I said, he brought a lot of cheaper units, like Mordor Rabble, Half orcs, um, and then the bow rabble, which probably upped his like deployment like by a lot. Berserkers, I didn't even see the berserkers, but they were apparently on there, and they did, did an insane amount of kills. I mean, so did these half orc axes; they were very, very good. They did insane as well. That one nearly gave five hundred kills. The crossbows here doing excellent. Uh, Mordor bow rabble doing fairly well for for rabble. Um, basically across the board, did excellent. Um, have a quick look at General Spiffington. We've got him with, I mean, yeah, his Dunherd swordsman, basically his main army. Blood Avengers. These were the axemen I was trying to find, but I couldn't find them to save my life. Um, and then Dunherd Chosens. Uh, another, actually, they might have been the axemen I was looking for, but they were did fairly well as well. His um, Dunherd swordsman. Some of them doing very, very well. Some just doing pretty average. Um, but yeah, doing doing very well to be fair. 
both of the evil factions. Then we'll look at um, Pasternak. He, unfortunately, yeah, brought a lot of low-tier units, which, I, like I said, I don't know how much money they had. Um, but, I mean, yeah, they were just outnumbered. But those spear militia didn't even get a kill. So that one got one. So they weren't probably worth bringing. They were probably better bringing some higher-tier units and uh, probably just going for, yeah, quality over quantity. That would probably be better. A lot more Citadel Guard or just normal Spearmen would definitely have been a better choice um, to bring. Even the Penneth Gillen getting a few kills, but they probably weren't really worth it either. His um, best unit probably was actually, was the Citadel Guard. Actually, no. Gondor Cavalry here getting uh, over 100 kills. So that's a shame to see that, but ah, uh, well. I mean, and then um, Dorwinian here with uh, Sir Beaston. Or Sir Beaston. I don't know. Either one. Um... I probably, sorry, I butcher names. I do that all the time. Um, but yeah, Paladins of the uh, Vitna Court doing very, very well. Um, last stand at the end there. I mean, definitely shouldn't have brought these Vin Farmer Militia. A, a Vine Farmer Militia. Uh, Vine Farmer Militia. That's almost, that's a tongue twister to me, apparently. Um, they definitely weren't really worth the money. Definitely should have brought more of these Spear Paladins. Look at the amount of kills these guys got. That is insane. Um, Vinland Watchman did fairly well. These bowmen didn't even get any kills. Definitely should have brought more of the uh, rangers and watchmen. And then uh, court guards doing okay as well. Um, and then these swordsmen did okay. But again, better bringing these Vinland guards to be honest. By the looks of it, they just do the best about of uh, kills. Um, like for your money's worth. So I mean, they might have had to be. They be, might have been required to bring lower tier units. I'm not sure, but I would have. If they weren't, then they should have probably brought higher tier units just to like. Um, just to last longer, to be honest. Like, quality is probably better than quantity in this mod. Um, but yeah, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, um, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you for sending this video in as well. Um, really appreciate it. I have another one. I'll have a look at that one and see what I think. And that might go up in a few weeks' time. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed and want to see more Rise of Mordor, please leave a like. And until next time...